Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If you're a first time viewer, please go down and click that subscribe button. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to WillieHow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about tonight is 2.5 and 5 gigabit Ethernet. Now, in the last video, I showed you this QNAP 2.5 gig switch, gigabit switch, and in my excitement, which I often get excited about new technology, I forgot to talk anything about 2.5 gigabit and five gigabit ethernet and just kind of like <laughs> went over the edge about it and and I apologize for that so that's why I'm doing this before we do the QNAP NAS video because in the QNAP NAS video we're going to use excuse me this uh, 2.5 gigabit switch along with my Sabrent um, connector we're going to use both of those and we're going to do data transfer tests between that QNAP NAS and my workstation at 2.5 uh, gigabits per second. So let's talk a little bit about 2.5 and 5 gigabits. I've got a ton of notes here. I made like four pages of notes. I'm going to leave my sources down in the description, but I'm going to kind of hit some of the highlights and, and things like that. So take a breath and let's talk about 2.5 and 5 gig. First of all, the uh, standard is officially known as the IEEE 802.3BZ-2016 or 2.5 gig slash 5G base T. There's lots of things in there, so it's it, you know it could be 2.5 gig base dash T, but I lumped them together. If you're looking at the full standard, it's clauses 125 and 126, and I'll leave a, a, a link to the IEEE standard. When I'm talking about this, we're going to call this either um, multi-gig Ethernet or we're going to call it you know, 2.5 or 5 gig because we're going to test that. So we're going to start you know, with this QNAP switch at 2.5 gig. So we're going to start with this and then I've got another QNAP switch that will do 2.5, 5, and 10. I've got a cambium switch that'll do 2.5, 5, and 10. And then I've got a ubiquity switch that'll do 2.5, 5, and 10. And so we're gonna use all of those switches. And then not only are we gonna test at 2.5 gig and at 5 gig, but we are also then going to test at 10 gig using this QNAP 10 gig uh, Thunderbolt adapter. So we're gonna do a lot of this over the next couple weeks. And it's, it's actually, I think, going to be super fun because not only are we going to use those different adapters, we're going to use different, different types of cables. So let's talk a little bit more about this. So the standard was introduced in 2016. And what it does and why uh, we should be paying attention to it is it allows us to use our existing Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6 for higher speeds for 2.5 and 5 gig. Now, a lot of people will probably comment on this and should comment on this, and you've even seen 10 gig at you know on CAT 5e. Now that's gonna be at very short distances. It's not gonna be at you know 100 meters. But we're gonna test different types of cabling, maybe even CAT 3, and see what happens with CAT 3 and 2.5 gig ethernet. I've got a whole box of cables. I've got to go look and see what I've got. We're going to try a lot of things with this. I think it's going to be really fun. That will be in the next video. Then of course we'll do 5 gig and we'll do uh, 10 gig videos and we'll kind of stagger those a little bit. So the biggest thing about this is we can get you know 2.5 or 5 gig out of our existing cabling. And let's talk about theoretical speeds. So you've seen me post some videos before where we were getting like 112 to 114 megabytes a second out of our gigabit ethernet. That's about the top end of what you're going to see. So let's talk about these theoretical speeds. We also need to talk about transmission speed versus storage. So when we see Ethernet speeds, when we talk about 1 gigabit, 2.5 gigabit, 5 gigabit, 10 gigabit, 40 gigabit, 
those are transmission speeds. When files are stored on the, the medium, they are, you know, we usually talk about those in like megabytes, uh, kilobytes, gigabytes, terabytes. Um, so there's a, a difference in how we see things transferred versus how we, we store them. Now, if you look at the math behind like one, one gigabit per second, the maximum theoretical speed is 125 megabytes per second. So you'll notice when we, when we get into this and we do our Windows speed test, Windows is gonna show us negotiated at one speed, but then when we transfer the data, when we're storing that data, it's gonna show us actually copying it at like 112 to 114 megabytes per second, right? So, and usually on gigabit, when I see gigabit that is like good gigabit, I'm seeing between 110 and 114 megabytes per second. That's kind of the range that I'm seeing that. So if we do some rough quick math on this, and let's say, let's say that we're just going to use 110 megabytes per second as our top end for one gigabit. So if we take that and we translate that over to 2.5 gigabits, we should be able to expect 275 megabytes per second on 2.5 gig and 550 megabytes per second on 5 gigabit ethernet. So when you start uh, moving the bits around that fast, when you start tossing those packets that fast, there are a lot of things that now become bottlenecks. Discs, uh, you know, other things inside the computers, cabling. I mean, we're going to start seeing where, you know, the, the theoretical and the real world, where the rubber meets the road. Now, even though this standard was released in 2016, uh, uptake has been a little bit slow. But in the last year or so, we've seen a lot of manufacturers really start pushing the 2.5 and the 5 gig stuff. So it makes sense economically to just replace your ethernet switches instead of replacing all your cabling. Let me give you an example of that. And, and it really does make sense with, with uh, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E coming, which is something else we're gonna be talking about as well. It just makes sense to be, to be ready for these. And also if I'm storing you know, files on my, my NAS, why not push the files and, and, and receive the files faster if I can do that over the same cable. And obviously the more and more that, that people adopt this, the cheaper you know, the gear is gonna get. Now, in Peoria, Illinois, I have firsthand witnessed ethernet runs as cheap as $150 a piece and as expensive as $1,000 a piece. Now there's a lot of factors that go into that, like uh, who the, is an electrician, is it a little, low voltage, is it an IT company? Uh, all those companies charge different prices, but even at, um, let's just say $200 a run. So that's labor, cabling, ends, whatever ends, maybe faceplate, things like that. If you have to replace 100 plus runs at $200 a piece, that's over $20,000. And when you start seeing the price of these switches that I'm gonna introduce you to over the next few videos, you're gonna see why it makes much more sense to just drop in these new ethernet switches than it does to replace all of your cabling. The other thing that I'd like to note is that PoE is also supported in the 2.5, 5 gig, and 10 gig um, speeds. According to the standard, you can do one gig on Cat5 and 2.5 on Cat5e they say in the standard that you need CAT 6 uh, for uh, 5 gig. However, then later on it states that depending on the cable, the length of the cable run, that you can probably get 5 gig out of a 5E cable. So we're going to test all those things. And production and lab environments, are, our mileage is always going to vary on those kinds of things. So in the next video, we are going to test 2.5 gig, not with this QNAP switch, with the Sabrent adapter, but I'm gonna use different cables. Like I said, it sounds crazy, but I'm gonna to try to find a CAT3. I think I actually have one in my box of cables. CAT3, 
Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, whatever crazy cables I have, if I can get an, an RJ45 on the end, we might try them out. And then we'll use them for uh, the 5 gig and the, the 10 gig. So we'll have a standard set of cables that we use across those three tests. I'm actually kind of excited about that. Um, and then I'll also, I'll leave a, a, a link down below to the the IEEE standard and then also the Wikipedia page that kind of breaks some of this down. It's a little bit easier to digest. And on that page, that's where it talks about with sh shorter um, cables of lower categories, so Cat5, that we should still be able to get these speeds. What, what cable lengths, if I could get them, what cable lengths would you like to see me test this at? So I think I have a couple hundred feet of, of Cat3 maybe, or some cheap Cat5. You know, you want me to just put an end on each uh, end of that cable and test that? Let me know down in the comments, if it's possible, what kind of cable test you want to see here. And uh, I'm going to test with what I've got. I'm not going to go out and buy a bunch of new stuff for this. So, so throw it out, or if other people that are in the area have stuff and you want to see it tested out, let me know that too. So I'm really excited about this. Go check out the links down below. Check this out. Do a little bit of reading for yourself. We're actually, the rubber's going to meet the road uh, in the next set of videos with this QNAP device, the QNAP switch, the Sabrent, and we're just going to keep building on it from there. So you'll see, I'm sure you're going to see that it's actually advantageous to, to drop this in and do those instant network upgrades instead of, you know, recabling at the moment. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need that IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by using all of our Amazon affiliate links and other affiliate links, they are down below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over the channel. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.